Good morning. My name is Reverend Jim Ernst, and this is Unity of Central Minnesota. So glad you're able to join us here today. So last week, we talked about that transition, that transition in terms of moving through the void. So again, we've talked, we've spoken about the endings and moving through the void. We spoke about Moses and that 40 years in the desert. And then we talked about the new, or now we're going to talk about the new beginning, that moving into the promised land. So endings, the void, and then moving into that new beginning. And here is a quote from Henry David Thoreau. I learned this, at least, by my experiment, that if one advances confidently in the direction of their dreams and endeavors to live the life which they have imagined, they will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. They will put some things behind, will pass an invisible boundary. New, universal, and more liberal laws will begin to establish themselves around and within them, or the old laws to be expanded and interpreted in their favor in a more liberal sense. And they will live with the license of a higher order of beings. Again, that was Henry David Thoreau as he lived that year or so by himself out into the woods on Walden Pond. So we've talked about endings and Henry David Thoreau talks about beginnings with these words as well, moving into those beginnings. We've talked about the void and now we're moving into those new beginnings. And we may think of this new beginning as an, as an external thing, something that's happened out there. But instead, it's most definitely an internal experience. It is, in fact, a shift. It is a moving into a sense of readiness, an inner awakening for us. What we do is that new beginning is an expression of our desire, an expression of our desire. But a desire in, in which way? What, what is it that we're talking about? Well, we can either be very specific about that desire, as is taught in the book and the movie, The Secret, in which if you want something, like if you wanted that house, you would focus in on exactly how big you wanted that, exactly what color it was, maybe even exactly what type of trees were out there. But instead, other folks talk about the idea of being open and flexible with those new beginnings, that, that desire that we have and how we come to it. In other words, being open, being flexible, and not so specific as when we talked about that uh, secret type of, of manifestation. So not too specific is the other end of that spectrum. And that might be in order to give the universe room for something that's even better to come into our lives. Or what we can do is we can talk about both of those extremes and maybe somehow holding that paradox in our minds and achieving both things at the same time. Being specific not about the color or the tree, if it was a, an elm tree in our front yard, being more flexible. Maybe it's an oak tree in our front yard, but instead being specific about the quality of what we're thinking about, that quality that we're feeling within our hearts and how to make that feeling come into manifestation in our lives. So maybe it's that spe specificity on being, on what we're feeling within that house, but not so specific or restrictive about the actual form of what's coming into manifestation. 
So specific about what we feel, how that that house or that thing makes us feel, but not nailed down to where we exclude an infinite number of possibilities within our world at the same time. A lot of times we hear that phrase, let go and let God within our unity world as well. And we ask ourselves, does that mean that we totally let go of that dream, that feeling, that manifestation ourselves, and just simply 100% let go of that? I don't believe so. If we've asked ourselves to totally let go of it, that's probably not the right thing. Instead, what are the steps that we need to take within that dream? Have we removed ourselves from that equation? And that's probably not what that phrase, let go and let God, really means. In fact, no, I believe that let go and let God means that we surrender the specific results of how we come into manifestation of that thing but that the actual steps we actually take along the way. Robert Brummett, the author of this book that we have been studying in the past few weeks um, and that we ended a couple of weeks ago, Finding Yourself in Transition, tells us this, and I'm quoting here. A true new beginning will occur only after we have completed the inner work that is part of the previous stages. And when we are, when we are eternally ready, we find a way to create the external beginning. Or perhaps we could say that it will find us. There is a fascinating synchronicity between our inner world and our outer worlds. That new beginning often occurs in unexpected ways. An event that appears to be a mistake or even a breakdown may turn out to bring forth the external beginning. The best approach is, and again, this is our author speaking, the best approach is to be ready, but not anxious, to be alert, but not willful, to continue to pray and to trust. Let me let me say those couple of sentences again. To be ready, but not anxious. To be alert, but not willful. To continue to pray and to trust and to know that life is in divine order. Life is in divine order. So we get back to our story, our Old Testament story again, to illustrate moving into the promised land. So we remember that Moses actually died out there in the desert after 40 years of leading his people through the desert. He died in the desert. It, it signifies or it shows us that old ideas no longer serve us and we have to move past that. In the story, Joshua stands at that threshold, at that threshold of the, of the River Jordan. He's and, and maybe even imagine this, this leader, this new, this brand new leader after 40 years is at the bank of the River Jordan. He's got his people behind him, hundreds of people uh, behind him, maybe even thousands of people behind him. They are at a pre-dawn, maybe even, looking across the river, looking at this new land, which we know today as Palestine as Israel even. Joshua is that military leader that's been with him. He is that warrior. He is that man of action at this point, leading them into their new beginnings. And metaphysically, we might even see ourselves mirrored in Joshua. We might see ourselves as that that inner warrior, because we know we, that we were doing that inner work ourselves. We might see ourselves as that spiritual warrior, the one who 
has done the internal work ourselves. And then when we have taken all of those proper steps, we are the one who steps boldly into the promised land across the River Jordan and into our, our own promised land. So this last week, uh, many of us watched uh, on Wednesday uh, the swearing in of our new president. And one of the, uh, one of the young ladies that really impressed me was Amanda Gorman. Now, Amanda Gorman is that poet. She is that, that social activist. In fact, she's the first person to be, um, that national youth poet laureate. She's 22 years old. She's the youngest inaugural poet in history. And if you haven't seen her, please look her up. Um, you, uh, look her up on YouTube or, or on the internet somewhere. She's the one with that yellow coat and that, and that red hat that she was wearing. Yellow is her favorite color. She attends St. Bridget's Black Catholic Church in Los Angeles, California. So if you don't mind, imagine Joshua at the banks of the River Jordan. Dawn is breaking. He's at that border of the promised land. Or maybe it's you're imagining Amanda speaking directly to you and your new beginning. Or maybe this is the new beginning for us as a group, as a spiritual center. So imagine that. And here are just a few of the words. This isn't all of the words that she spoke, but simply a few. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where will we find ourselves? This In this never ending shade, We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine. But it doesn't mean that we are striving for a union that isn't perfect. We are striving to forge our future with purpose. We lift our gaze, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must first put our differences aside. We reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to no one and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew that even as we hurt, we hoped. That as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together, victorious. Our people diverse and beautiful will emerge, battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid, the new dawn balloons as we free it. For there was always light, if only we are brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. So that was the poem that Amanda Gorman, National Youth Poet Laureate, spoke on Wednesday to the nation, to the world, I would say even. And I'm simply gonna leave it there. I love you, I bless you. I see the Christ in each and every one of you. Namaste.